Hello coders, good afternoon, good afternoon. Sorry I was a bit late today. I um, I was watching the Olympics. <laughs> I was watching, uh, I was watching the Taekwondo. Awesome, awesome work, awesome stuff. Today what I wanna do is just have a bit of a chilled out stream today. Nothing massive, if I don't get anything done this stream, it's not gonna be a big deal. Um, I've literally come back from from a, a bit of a vacation, so I'm in still in holiday mode. What I would like to try and do though is install K6 for automated testing, automated load testing uh, for performance tests, um, because we know or I know that the How to Code Well site is slow, it's sluggish, um, but I don't know how sluggish and slow. So what I would like to know is at what point do things start breaking? So K6 is a, is a, a decent tool for, 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 such, a, for such a task. Um, see how my site holds up on load. So that's what we're going to do today. We're just going to play around and uh, install this. Um, now I have been away from this machine for over a week. So there's probably going to be some things that I need to do, including straight off the bat, um, I need to download an update to Docker. So that's what we're going to do. First of all, here we go. Update ready to download. So let's go ahead and do that. And I've used K6 before. I've never installed it on my own though. I've, I've worked on a project where K6 was already installed. Um, so I've, I have had a very small amount of play with it. Um, but not a huge amount. So today is more about learning K6 and and seeing how it installs. Um, I hear there is an installation for Docker that we're going to be playing with. So if we do installation here, this is the k6.io uh, documentation or website. So you can install it through Linux. Uh, there is Mac OS, so I could do it through uh, Brew. Um, there's Windows or there's this Docker here. So I just I'm I'm intrigued. I want to know how how one would do that. So let's get into the Docker Hub and just take a look and see. <coughs> here we go. Load impact forward slash K6. K6 is a modern load testing tool building on load impacts, years of experience in the load and performance testing industry. It provides a clean approach to scripting API, local and cloud execution, flexible, flexible configuration with command and control through CLI and, or a REST API. This is how load testing should look in the 21st century. <laughs> okay, so blah, 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 goes through some features. Uh, scripting in ES6 JavaScript, everything as code, so testing logic and configuration op op and configuration options are both in the JS for version control and friendliness. That's great. Um, it's got things for cookies and crypto and custom metrics and coding and environment variables, all the good things, all the good things. But um, I guess once the Docker gets updated, how are we doing on one, on that front? Uh, update and restart. Are we going to do that? I don't know. <laughs> Once that's done, um, it doesn't actually, <laughs> there's no, I've, do, I've got nothing in my tabs to say how far that's going to go through. So that could take a while. Um, but once that's done, we'll pull down the image and, and we'll take a look at this. So, is there any documentation on how to actually use this Docker image? Is there like, if I did tags here, can I have a look at the, uh, if we go to latest. Just want to have a little nose. So it's using, doesn't really give anything away apart from a working directory and entry point. Okay. It's got a different user, one, two, three, four, five. 
ideally I want to find like a docker compose file that um, has this stuff. What I might do is just have a quick Google whilst we wait for it. Here we go. Ah, oh, Docker's given me an error. I've never had one of this before. Fail, uh, an unsized startup failure. No response. Reset Docker to factory defaults. No. Diagnose feedback. No. Or exit. Okay, let me just see. <laughs> Let's see the state of play of Docker. This could screw up the whole thing. Let's get, get all that. Like I said, I haven't used this machine in a while, so there's going to be lots of stuff to uh, do off the bat. This is why it's a bit more of a chilled out stream, I think, than the others. Um, Docker PS hyphen A. Oh, good, 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 good. Right. Oh, is it still doing its thing? It's still restarting, it's still starting. Fair enough, okay. Okay, whilst we worry about that, let's uh, do a git stash. Save markup changes. Thank you. Let's do a git checkout of main. Okay, let's do a git poll. Get anything down that we need. I think we're all good. And let's do a git checkout hyphen b of feature k6. Let's get to where we, where we want to be. Come on, Docker. All right, that looks like it's up now. Let's do uh, again a Docker. That one. Okay, so it does look like Docker is working, even though it's saying that there is a update, but we'll worry about that later. Let's do a Docker uh, machine and let's do a start. And whilst that's working through, let's take a look at K6 Docker Compose. How to just run K6 in a Docker container. Docker Compose stopped working after K6 Compose. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so version 3.4, networks of K6. Uh, services is InfluxDB. I'm assuming that's a database for the various things and I'm assuming Grafana is a front end I think so then here's k6 so it's uh, load impact k6 latest specify some ports You've got k6 out which is equal to the influx DB and then that's the samples and the scripts okay <laughs> Maybe what I should do is just run K6 um, on its own first, rather than worrying about it, doing it in uh, in Docker. Maybe that's probably the best thing. What's this? Results and visualization. Oh, hello. You can use the Grafana for visualization of your K6 metrics. That looks lovely, doesn't it? I like that nice little graph chart. I like my charts. Installing the influx. Uh, run that install Grafana. So what's Influx? Influx DB. Yeah, I thought that was the thing. A database for it. Um, so run out Influx DB. Oh, that is the same as what we saw in here, right? No, no, no. Yeah, this, uh, this run command. Sorry, not that one, this one. Looks very similar to this. Okay, maybe I'm getting one step ahead of myself. Let's just install, I tell you what, let's install it with brew locally to this machine. And then once I've got it all working and I've created a script for it, then we can then work on maybe running it in a Docker service um, so we've got the Grafana 
Custom Grafana dashboard. Now I'll create a dashboard. Or maybe I should just jump straight into it. I might just jump, jump straight into it. Let's just jump straight into it. <laughs> Grafana and K6. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's uh, let's just dive straight in, shall we? What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> okay, what I'm gonna do, just for sort of ease, let's bring this up here so we can see it, is I'm gonna probably create a contain a, a um. A directory called K6 in the website. Let's have a look. A new folder. We'll call this K6. And in here, we'll we're going to give a um, a doc, create a Docker Compose file. So new uh, file. Docker uh, Compose. And Yes, we'll add that in. Now, let's have let's use this one like a reference point. So let's use that one. So we've got version 3.4, we've got the net various networks. So K6 and Grafana, and we've got the influx DB as a service. That's one service here. It's uh, relying on these net or using these networks. It has a bunch of it has a port. We have an environment variable. That's the database. I guess that's the database name, maybe. And then down here we have, um, I'm not sure what these roles are. Let me see. This is off of the Grafana. Um, uh, package. So migrating from binary Docker, Docker poll, load impact K6, pre-built binaries and other platforms running K6. Overview. I think what I'm going to do is take this and hack it up a bit. So we'll take that. There we go. Grafana. That's dot Grafana, etc. Grafana prov uh, provisioning. So let's see what uh, what I need to do. Uh, K. This is K six. Grafana K six. Yeah. Dot Grafana. This goes into. Okay, that's going to be tricky. Okay, I tell you what, let's um, let's not worry about the front end for this at the minute. We, we are jump, I am diving in too far deep before actually getting my feet wet. So let's um, let's wor just worry about this, for instance, K6. So I'm go what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment out this stuff for the time being. Like I said, I've never used K6 before, so I don't actually know how this all hangs together. Or I have, but when it was already pre-built, pre-used, so... Okay, so we just have that, and it looks as though... Let's get rid of that environment variable. It looks as though we use samples and scripts. So I think this is the test data, right? The test bits and pieces, if we go back to the installation um, of this, we have, it doesn't give you anything here about, okay, running K6. Okay, let's start by running a sample local script. Copy the code below and paste it into your favorite editor and save it as scripts.js. Then run the K6 using this command. So K6 run script. Adding more VU, so this is how many people, how many virtual users 
um, are hitting the thing at this any one point. Okay. Ah, oh, right. There is. Okay. There is Docker in here. Let's do Docker. So it's Docker run i load impact k6 run and then that's the script. So I'm wondering if we can create an um, like a directory in here called tests, right? And we have the tests that we want to run in here. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste this. What did you say this was? Scripts.js. Scripts.js. All right. And what we'll do is we'll add that into here. Whoops, press the wrong button. There we go. So we're importing HTTP from K6. HTTP imports sleep from K6. Um, so I, I guess this obviously hasn't been installed locally, obviously. Um, Docker in Win PowerShell. <laughs> so then what, what, what I would do is K6 run, uh, no, it's, it's, this isn't it. Docker run I load impact. So that's the image. Um, that the number of uh, virtual users. This is the duration I want to run the test with, and then this would be the path of the script. I guess. I tell you what. Let's let's make this less complicated. Let's bring that into here. Thank you. And let's. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe we can get away with putting it into there and then changing that to be um, tests. Maybe. And then that goes to scripts. And then we do a docker, a docker run. I don't know. Let's give it a go. <laughs> Zero confidence. Let's go to uh, CDK6. LS. Right, let's do a, a Docker compose up hyphen D. And have I, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Have I evaluated the shell? I can't remember if I have yet. Right, let's do a, a Docker compose hyphen up hang on what no 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 I mean I mean K6 right so why is it docker hyphen compose not docker um Yes, it is. That's why it hasn't found it. Silly me. Silly, silly me. See, this is what happens when you go on holiday. <laughs> you forget little, small details like this, which screws everything up. All right, let's try this. Here we go. The compose file, Docker Compose, is valid because the service K6 environment contains an invalid type. It should be an object or an array. That's because of this thing here. OK, let's get rid of that. Now run that. <laughs> right, cool. Um, so let's go back to the example that we have here. Docker run i. So that's that's that. But we can run the service, right? So if we did Docker ps, uh, we should see our service that was created, which is. Load impact, K6, it is exited. Docker logs, minus F. Uh, what's the name of that? Try and do it through the container ID. K6 command, it needs a command to run, of course. 
All right, well, we've downloaded the image. We'll faff about with the the uh, the compose file in a second. Let's just run this thing. Let's just get it ra running. So let's do a, a Docker run. Um, let's do... Um, 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 um. Did I call it K6? Was it called K6 or did I? Image command. Created names. Here we go. K6, K61. Docker run. Um, and then we want to do, let's do the, the views here. Views is equal to 10. And then we do uh, duration. of uh, 30 seconds and then let's do I think I put it in to tests yeah script.js let's run that unable to find <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> all right docker run i and then run that uh, that image. We've already downloaded it, so it should be good. Okay, so unknown, unknown command. And then we got a, no, so yeah, unknown command, unknown command. Let's just see if we can copy this. Maybe I've, oh, right. There's a, there's a less than symbol there. Missed that out. Yay. Okay. Right. Adding more views. Now we'll try and add more views. Running the 30 seconds. That didn't re did that actually? Did that? I mean, we got the time and we got the log level. We got unknown flag V. Ah, oh, right, okay. Unknown flag V U S 10. V U S 10. Tell you what, let's just run this without screwing about so this would be tests scripts there we go so k6io eighty complete ninety complete one hundred complete and zero uh, uninterrupt in interrupted iterations Ninety, ninety-seven, one hundred. There we go. So data received, three point one megabytes. Data sent. Let's make this a bit bigger. So what that's showing us here is that we have zero failed. We have an average response time of 1.72 milliseconds. I think, I think that's what I'm seeing here. Um, nothing was blocked. I like the data received. That's nice because it tells you how, you know, how big the request was. Um, how many HTTP requests were made? Iteration duration, iteration, 270 iterations. Nice. 
I like that. I like that. Let's see now. If I was to just to flip this up, right? And I tell you what, let's let's just change this to be make sure the website's running. So how to code well.local. Just make sure that that runs. And I just want to change this to be the site that we want to hit, which is this one. So instead of this get request here, uh, we do how to code well, well. If I can spell my own website, dot local. And let's see what we can do. Let's run the same thing and just compare. Compare notes. <laughs> hey, Turner, thank you for uh, subscribing. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. 19 months. Yeah, I'm doing well, thanks. I'm doing very well. Um, I've just come back from a bit of a vacation, which is nice. So today is a bit of a chilled out stream. I'm just trying to get K6 running. Um, there's a lot of request failures here. <laughs> they all they all failed. Yeah, I hope you're doing well yourself. Let's change that to be HTTP, not HTTPS. See if that makes any difference. So K6 is a, a load balancer. Um, still getting failures. Request failed. No such host. Interesting. <laughs> How to... Yeah, I mean, that's all spelling spelt correctly, right? I mean, that's that's how to code well dot local is the site that we have running here. So uh, now I'm running it through a Docker machine. So would that be local host or uh, no, I don't think so. Oh, wait, hang on a minute. If I'm running it against the machine. No, because I'm running it locally. So it should hit it. How to code well dot local. Look up how to code well on no such host. Hmm, this is a bit of a non annoyance, isn't it? Something is wrong with my It's not anything to do with net. It might be something to do with the network. Let me give me. Let me just double check something. I reckon it's something to do with the network, Docker network. So if we go to our current Docker compose file, which is here, do we have any network set? Yes, yes, we do. So I believe what I need to do is on in here. Yeah, I reckon I need to do networks. I think I need to say how to code well. And I reckon, I mean, I'm just guessing here. How to, Ba, 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 ba. Hey, may I send you a link to Stack Overflow where... Yeah, please do. Mm. This is my first, um, first attempt of installing this. So um, now I'm doing this through a Docker machine. So I'm wondering if uh, if that's got something to do with it around the networks. Let me just have a little play and see if that this is the thing. I think in here, 
I need to supply, I need to do how to go well, and I think I need to say external is true, and I believe I need to do docker. Oh, hang on, no, wait, 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 wait. We're not doing it through compose, so that's not gonna even, that's not even gonna help. Um, no, that's not gonna help. I'll, I'll leave it in though, but. Docker run external network. Networking using the host. Here we go. Network host. Thanks for that. Cheers. Aha, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's uh that's what I was just about to try. The um the dot net the, the the hyphen hyphen net equals host. Um okay, inside your K6 script use the the URL host.docker.internal to access something running on the host machine. So HTTP get host dot okay. On the Windows, this can be okay, fine. Sure. Let me. S I guess what I need to do is find out the IP of the Docker machine. So let's do Docker machine IP. So it is that. Let's see if I can hit that directly. I can't remember whether I've got this running straight off the bat off of that machine off of that IP. Whether I need to go through a port. I can't remember whether I've fudged it at all. Yes, I have. Okay, cool. So it, it would be running off of port eighty. So it, when I was when I was reading that, it was like port eighty eighty. Was, mm, not sure. Okay, let's change this then to be um, to be what um, what that post has said. Thank you very much for that. So it's instead of instead of this, and I'm assuming this can all be done through environment variables at a later point, right? So let's grab that, and go into scripts. Let's um, change that up to be internal that hopefully will now do the thing that I want it to do. Nope. <laughs> I think I've spelt that all correctly, right? Host.docker.internal, HTTP, yep. Okay, next thing, can I attack it through the IP address? The IP address being what I've just got up here. If I can find it. I think it was 192 once, here we go. Here we go. See, this worked through the IP address. It's because I'm running it in Docker machine, I think. Um, so Docker machine being its own sort of virtual machine with its own IP address. Come on, 87, 90, 93, 100. I would have thought that would have finished it by now. Okay, here we go. So, uh, what am I looking at here? Data received was 660 kilobytes. Data sent was 800 bytes. 
uh, the average duration that's quite long <laughs> these are all quite long aren't they HTTP uh, there was no failures which was nice Ten requests. Iteration duration is 38.2 seconds. Yikes. That's uh that's super damn slow. I think. If we were to compare this, let's compare this with um let's just grab uh grab that. Let's grab that for a minute and compare it with something else. Let's do uh, k6.io and uh, let's change that to HTTPS and let's run that. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll copy this and we'll bung it into like a, a notes thing. So I'm just going to bung that into my notes. So this is uh, .local. Okay, so um, what have we got? Uh, iterations, average views, uh, average duration is 1.26, 1.24, and mine is 34.37. <sighs> no, it's not. It's even worse. It's 38.2. Okay, so yeah, as you can see, there is a lot I can of. Um, a lot I could improve on. <laughs> so the minimum was uh, 1.9. This is off of K6, and my minimum was uh, 34.85. And the, do we have a maximum here of 2.3? And my maximum was uh, 39.8. Jesus, that's huge. Now I know that we are running in dev mode, but there's still a lot of things that I could probably play with. And uh, I know that I haven't optimized the web server. Well, I haven't. I haven't done any optimization, speed optimization at all. But um, this is a good. This is certainly a good thing to um, check. Let's. Um, I tell you what. Let's bring another another view into this. So then, actually, let's do it side by side so we can compare. Uh, nope, sorry. There we go. And let's do an eval. And let's do a uh, CD into code. Oh, hang on, where am I? There we go. Um, let's do, let's change that up to be the IP address of the machine and let's just run that again oh sorry k6 k6 thank you just to compare notes side by side I mean, I know we're comparing chalk and cheese here. One's in production and one's on local and one's a website promoting how to speed up your <laughs> speed up things and test things and stuff. And, and one isn't. But um, it's always good to see what um, your certain benchmarks and compare.
Okay, here we go. So, what have we got? Still running off of the same shocking iteration durations. <laughs> that was only 10, that was 246. Um, the average failure, well, there's nothing there. Uh, request duration is uh, 241 milliseconds. That was the, that's the HTTP request duration. Um, whereas mine is, again, very big. Very, very big. I'm just going to pop downstairs, check on Murphy, um, and get myself a protein shake, and then um, and I'll be back. And I'll be back. So I'll see you very shortly. Man, it's hot. It's hot, hot, hot. I'm on this uh, mighty shake. It's like um, it's it's plant-based protein. I'm not vegan. Just trying it out. It's got 11 grams of protein in it. Um. Well, I suppose we've got it working now, which is good. I think the next stage is to get it working from Docker Compose. And then what I would like to do is maybe play with a visualization. Um, yeah, play with a visualization, I think. Uh, take a look at the Grafana um, and the, what was that, DB? The in, is it Influx DB? So let's get rid of this. Um, how will I run this through Docker Compose? So this is Grafana. Uh, if I was to take a look at the Docker file, it's using Go, nice. And if I was to have a look at the Docker Compose file for this, Samples and scripts. K6 out. That's the. That's that for the environment variable. Uh, if I, I tried it before, didn't I? Through um, through this Docker file, and it had a little bit of a, a moan. Let's just try it again, right? Let's just see where we're at with this. So um, I forget which one's which. This is the, right, let's just get rid of that side for a second. Right, so are we in the, yeah, we are. Okay, let's do docker compose up hyphen D. I'm guessing I would need to do, aha, declared external, but could not be found. Please create the network manually using docker compose. Aha. All right, let's get rid of that for a second. There's going to be a little bit of faff. Whilst I configure all of this. Okay, so that's now up. But I believe if we ran this, oh my God, look at all those. <laughs> uh, it would be case, I think it was this one, which was exited four seconds ago. And I think it's because
it doesn't have a, a starting point. Yeah, command, usage command, available is command. So archive, cloud, convert, help, inspect, login, pause, resume, run. I think that's what we need. That's what we need to start with. So if I was to do, if I was to create an entry point for this, to say, look, just run everything in the tests suite, much like we've got an entry point for the actual website. Let me just remind myself how that's done. So we could give it a command, couldn't we? Yeah, we could give it a command. Um, So let's do Docker Compose Run. have a nice uh, for removing the thing um, we need to give it a name which would be the name of a service and the service name would be probably k6 yes and then Uh, we then do the command. So I'm guessing this would be run, and then we would do. Where's this? Where's this volume going into? It's going into uh, scripts. Is that it? Okay, here we go. The module sniffer script script couldn't be found on a local disk. I probably haven't mounted it correctly. Um, although it should be running from the compose file which has it mounted and that's being mounted in script yeah in scripts and it's called script oh s i'm missing the s there we go that's how you run it through compose <laughs> strangely though Oh yes, it's because I'm running a different command, aren't I? What was the original command? Um, history, pipe to grip. Um, it was, here we go, views 10, duration 30 seconds. So, it would be run. There we go. Okay, guess what I'm gonna do now? I'm gonna put this in a make file. <laughs> Just so I can do make K6 and have at it. Um, but no, let's, let's, that's getting a bit too far. Let's 
see if we can get this Grafana stuff running. That would be nice, wouldn't it? It's a different output when you're doing it through Docker, I think. We st we've got the, a similar thing, 39.23. Um, nothing failed. Okay, so um, let's take a look and see about wiring this stuff up. First of all, though, there is a ton of um, stuff that I, I want to just get rid of. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, let's get rid of... Or oh, let's, let's grab the InfluxDB. Add in Grafana as the network. And then, and yeah, why not add that in? We're gonna have to look at how this is, um, how the volumes are made though. There's no volumes on the influx DB, which is which is good. Uh, but with here, we've got the volume, which is Grafana. Now Grafana is you can use Grafana, which is I think is it that one? It is. I'm guessing this is going to be this directory in here. Preload Grafana dashboard in the Docker Compose setup. Yeah. So my question is, do I actually need to download this directory locally? Brew install K6 or Linux or curl. Anything for Docker here. Docker, here we go. Sudo pull load impact K6 pre-built binaries. Maybe not. Running K6, so that's K6 again. Overview, script execution. There doesn't appear to be a need for, for that. Let me just have a look at. Can use Grafana for visualizing your K6 metrics. The first step to upload your test results metrics to a stored storage backend. Uh, configure Grafana to fetch data from your backend to visualize the test results. This tutorial shows you how to upload the test results metrics into an InfluxDB instance and configure Grafana to configure this K6 metrics from the InfluxDB. Sounds all good. Okay, so Docker run, I run out, got to give it an output, influx db, you got it, that's the, uh, okay, okay, so that makes sense, so that's the local host on that particular port, so that particular port would be off of the back of this, right, so 86, 8086, yes, and then my kb, my k6 db, where we've just got K6. And then that's the script. Okay, install Grafana. Full install is in the Grafana docs. So let's take a look at you. Okay, so there doesn't appear to be deploy Grafana on Kubernetes. Run a Docker image, I like that. The Alpine image of Grafana Grafana. I am pronouncing that right, Grafana. Is that right? I think it is. Um, run from the main branch, install the plugins in the Docker container. Grafana clock panel, simple JSON data source. 
install the plugins from other stuff. Nah. Okay, all right. There's a couple of parts to this jigsaw puzzle here, obviously. So one is that we need to get the output going in the right direction. So let's do a, let's think about this for a second. That would, I suppose, that's going to have to come through the old, um, off of this stuff, right? So, out is equal to influx db, and then that's the address. That's probably what we'll have pain on, although it should be that. IP address and then 8086. Let's give that a go. So let's do 192.168.1.1. And let's put a space between the out and the influx DB. Okay, let's just run that. No such file directory. Brilliant. Is it because I've put the uh, that on it? Whoops. Yes, it is. So, creating the network Grafana, then loading that. Uh, so the output we can see is now going to influx db v1 and we're saying the connection is refused. Can't write to it. Ah, I know why, I know why. I think I need to bring these up and pull down the actual stuff. Yes. <laughs> How can I write to a database that doesn't exist? <laughs> hey, how's it going? Detox Mango. And Liprovita. Li Is that the right way of pronouncing that username? Thank you very much for uh, joining today. I'm having a bit of a chilled out stream. Um, just uh, playing around with K6, seeing if we can get it installed and running. This is great for load testing. Um, this is first time for me installing this. So um, I'm taking it nice and slow. I'm doing all right. I've just come back from a vacation. So um, I'm chilled. I'm doing good. I was walking in uh, Cornwall on the coastal paths with Murphy, who is my English Springer Spaniel, who is chilling out on the bed in the other room. <laughs> okay, so that is looking like it's all downloaded. So let's run that mighty script again. Okay, so the output is now going to the influx DB V1. So that looks like it's working. Of course I can, well, I'll try and give you some advice. <laughs> my first advice I would give you is to not listen to my advice, but yeah, I'll, I'll try. What's up? <laughs> Ask away. Have I ever asked anyone to mentor me? Hmm. No. No, I think is the short answer to that. No, I haven't. However, I have had people in my career and my learning journey that's obviously still going on that have mentored me 
without knowing, perhaps, or because that that was their job. As in, I went, I did two college courses and in a university degree, and I consider having a lot of mentoring when I was doing those those courses. Obviously, by the the, the teachers and the lecturers at the at, at, you know in that field of study. And then I think, um, I think, throughout my career, there's been a load of people who have taken me under their wing, and have shown me the ropes and given me the flexibility to explore various different avenues of of uh, web development. But I, I haven't straight up asked anybody, "Can you mentor me?" Um, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> okay, so that that seems to have all ran through. I mean, we've gone, we've done one scenario. It's gone into the influx DB. Now I've got to try and work out how on earth do we do we get this out. Um, so I'm guessing with this, we need to put that back. Although I, maybe not. Maybe this is the environment variables. I'll need to look into this. Let's just let's not put that in. This though is interesting. So I wonder if we can run it from port three thousand. This is worrying because this is using the Grafana um, volume, which I don't actually have. It's created it here, but there's nothing in it. Uh, so I'm gonna have to probably read the docs for that. I think. Nice, nice. I've been, um, yeah, that's really good. I, and I do hope that person um, has the time and the energy to, uh, to, 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 to do it. I have been asked to mentor um, and I have mentored people before, just, you know, lightly, you know, not, not, not over a, a large portion of time, just, you know, I've had face-to-face -face chats with people and I've over like Zoom or Skype or whatever, uh, just to talk about a particular query in web development in their career. Um, one thing I will say is that it does take a lot of time and a lot of energy to become, be a mentor, to to give up a portion of your your day, your your and and your thinking space to help people out. So I applaud people who do that. Um, but at the same time, I know how um, how challenging that is. So what I'm trying to say in a roundabout way is if this person doesn't get back to you, then don't take it personally. Um, don't take it personally. There could be 101 reasons why uh, you don't get a mentor. Um, and, it, and, and it's probably not you. <laughs> because I have been asked to mentor people and I've refused on the grounds of I'm in an incre incredibly busy week and I don't have the headspace to do so. Um, yeah. Build. I'm wondering if I need to run these kind of things here. So docker run 3000 Grafana Grafana, run a specific version of Grafana. Just out of interest, if I was to hit the IP address and go to port 3000, what's going to show? Probably nothing because I've gone and... Um, so 192.168, blah de blah de blah, 3000. I'm pro we're probably going to hit nothing, right? I stand very corrected here. That is so cool. I th the reason why I thought we weren't going to hit anything is because we did a volume mount of nothing. <laughs> so I'm going to get rid of this. I'm just going to comment that out for a minute. And I'm going to delete that directory here. 
we're just playing today. It's, it's no biggie. If this doesn't work, it doesn't work. I'm surprised it's worked this far. Okay, so what can I do with this then? This looks super cool. Um, wow. I'm guessing by the looks of things, no data has actually been added to this because I don't seem to have a dashboard of sorts. Add a panel, save dashboard, dashboard settings, cycle view. Let's, let's uh, create a dashboard. Add an empty panel. Okay, no, there are some statistics. What am I looking for here? Is there anything to give me any kind of indication as to... I don't know, the pages we're hitting. Bar chart. Wow, there's loads of stuff. Dashboard list. Bar gauge. <laughs> wow, I can't believe this is all open source and, and readily available. 31. Okay, so what is what does that represent? Is that the is that is that the um, the duration panel statistics? Huh. Oh, did I need to uh, import create? This is the first time I've used Grafana. This is um, this is pretty mental. I like it. Mental in a good way. Um, yeah, K6 is open source. That's the whole reason I'm using it. Um, well, there's other reasons I'm using it, but um, I was trying, I was looking into ways to just see how slow my, because I know how slow my site is, but just to analyze it and see if we can throw things at it. Load test. Um, Dashboard. That is my okay. That is that is my dashboard. Okay, let's, so let's go to create here. Of course, I'm I'm doing this without reading any manuals. So, alerting alert rules. Nice notification channels. Data sources. Can I see what those are set to? Okay, so maybe that was just dummy data then. If do I need to add a data source? Influx DB, that's what we should have. Okay, save and test. Bad gateway. Okay. So my guessing is that there is something not set up correctly with the uh, Docker could be that k6 out although we are running that from the command right k6 out ah we've got the database name that should be k6 should it not I don't know I think so. I tell you what, let's come out of this for a second. Let's come out of that and let's do a, a Docker. Uh, come, uh, not that. Let's just bring those up again. And then I think this should be just K6, not K6, not my K6 DB. K6. Let's give that a go. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think it is demo data. <laughs> So the question is, is this actually hitting Grafana? I don't think it is. Right, let's, instead of just clicking about like an idiot, let's have a look and actually see some, some, um, some stuff. Docker run hyphen D P Grafana installed plugins. Build and run the Docker image with pre installed plugins. Build and Okay, I'm not really bothered by other plugins. Uh, I just want to modify your permissions. All right, let's start from the top here. So we're running Grafana latest. For every second build, for every successful build of the main branch, we update the Grafana. Grafana main and Grafana Grafana main Ubuntu tags. Additionally, two new tags are created, the dev version ID and the dev version build pre Ubuntu, where the version, okay, blah, 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 blah. What am I running? <laughs> Let's get that dealt with first. We're running latest. So maybe I need to switch to a particular build. Use these to get the latest main builds of Grafana. Yeah, maybe that's what I need to do. Maybe I need to change latest to main. For a list of available tags, check the Grafana uh, and Grafana dev. Let's do that. So, main Ubuntu was two days ago. Main Ubuntu master. And then we got latest, latest. Yeah, okay, let's change this to be main Ubuntu. Good stuff. Let's not bother with the volumes. Let's make sure that everything's wired up. So that is the K6 out. That's the influx K6, K6. Yep, that looks good to me. So let's do a, let's bring this up. No, not at all. Detox Mango, no, 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 no. You won't ruin the relationship, hell no. No. No, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, no. You should, uh, no. If anything, that person should feel privileged. Um, in my opinion, let's just caveat all this by saying in my opinion. In my opinion, the person that you're asking to be mentored from or by should be feeling privileged that they are um, held in that high regard. At least that's what I would think. And then, and then, and then my imposter syndrome would come in. <laughs> 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 but, 
but no, don't don't um, don't think that you will ruin the relationship by asking for help. Um, there was one um, one thing I did really wrong uh, when I started in web development ages ago was that um, I didn't ask for enough help, and the help that I the help that I received when I didn't understand it, I didn't ask for further clarification of it. So constantly ask for help. Um, if when you can but always make sure that you've understood the help that was that was given um, it's super important okay I'm gonna now see if we can run this again I'm gonna not bother with the setting the output because that should already really be done So we're going to get rid of that. It's yeah, it's still running the influx because that's through the Docker Compose. So that's winning. So it's as though we're throwing things into the DB. But it's I think it is the Grafana receiving end of that. Now whether I need to configure Grafana to receive, um, sorry, uh, too many tabs. Done it again, haven't I? There we go. So on Grafana here, we've got the Grafana anonymous enabled with org roles. Whether I need to adjust this to connect to um, Influx DB somehow, but anyway, that's all gone through. Welcome to Dugrafana. Why, why am I not seeing my things? Grafana fundamentals, create users and teams, provision dashboards and data sources, build panel plugin, blah de blah de blah. Okay, let's go. Let's first of all let's bring that back. I thought I thought that was gonna open up in a new tab. So fundamentals. Okay, fine, start. Uh, prerequisites Docker and Docker Compose included with Docker blah 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 blah. Set up the application, git clone. This tutorial uses a sample application that we're going to pull from here. Then we do Docker PS, Docker Compose up hyphen D. Then we do Docker PS, then in the state column. And then we go to local host 8080. Uh, the sample application Grafana News lets you post links to various things. Look into Grafana, go to localhost 3000, which we have got running there. Um, in the email or username, enter in admin, enter in password, click on login. Is there, have I already, I've logged in through those environment variables, I think. Cycle V mode, settings. Save. Yes. Oh no, sign in. Okay, maybe I need to do that first. <laughs> uh, enter in admin admin. Let's uh, let's just try that. Okay, that didn't work. So log in to Grafana. Oh, new password. Okay. So let's just skip that for now. Okay, so now we're logged in. Good. Okay, so we're now logged in. Something to new password, yada, yada, yada. Add metrics to the data source. The sample application exposes metrics which are stored in the Promethe in Prometheus, a popular uh, time series database. Yada, yada, yada. And, uh, okay, explore your metrics. Grafana Explore is a workflow. Oh, hang on, sorry. Here we go. Add data source. This is this is the step we're missing, isn't it? Where's add data source? 
uh, click on add in the sidebar, hover over the configuration gear icon and then click add and click data sources. So, uh, boom, okay. Then this big blue thing here, boom. And then I'm assuming it is, uh, ooh, Elasticsearch, look at that. Prometheus, uh, MySQL, do we have Influx. Right, here we go. In the sidebar, hover over your cursor in the configuration gear. Yet yeah, done that. Add data sources. Yet yeah, done that, done that, done that. Uh, okay, so we need to wire this up, right? So in the URL box, enter Prometheus 1990, and we are using something else. We're using um, Influx 80s. This we're using this, aren't we? That's what we're using. Boom. Uh, access is server default, timeout off. I think that's all good. I'm not going to worry about this too much. Is there, can I click on, there we go. InfluxDB, uh, setting databases. InfluxDB, syntax allows switching for a database and query. But I better save a test. Let's give that a go. Database sources, although the database name is required. Database name is K6. Save and test. Yay, data source is working. Okay, that's good. That's that's a good thing. <laughs> okay, uh, let's get into... See, reading documentation does help. And this documentation is really good. Exploring your metrics. Grafana Explore is a workflow for troubleshooting uh, and data exp exploration. Exploration? Exploration. Blah, blah, blah. In this step, you'll be using Explore to create an ad hoc queries to understand the metrics exposed by the sample application. Okay, in the sidebar, click on Explore, Compass Roll, Rose icon. Mm, that one. Wow. Okay. Um, some more of my shake. Explorer is a workflow for troubleshooting. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In it, click on, click on the query editor. Enter the Promol QL query, and then press Shift Enter. The graph appears. This is fancy. Add query, query inspector. Um, run query. Is it because I haven't, so default select measurement where, select field value mean. Let's just get back to here a minute. In the query editor where it says enter promo QL, enter uh, TNS request duration seconds count. So we probably don't have prom QL, right? Because we have influx DB. So I'm guessing it's Is it here? Aha. Yeah, nothing was failed. So let's do, did we do iteration duration? I think we did, yeah. Nice. Okay. Shift enter a graph appears in the top right corner. Click on the drop down, run query button, and select five 
seconds. Grafana runs your query and updates the graph every five seconds. Really? That's impressive. So if we were to just change this to be iteration, is it, it, is it, it's not that, is it? It's uh, date, it's HTTP request duration. Is this running the query now? Yeah, it is, you can see it. <laughs> nice. Uh, okay, so is a counter rather than uh, visualizing the actual value, you you can use counters to calculate the the rate of change, i.e., how fast the value increases. Okay, so here we're saying the rate of five m. Immediately below the graph, there's an area where the time series is listed with colored with a colored icon next to it. Oh wow, you can start getting proper Excel spreadsheet on this thing. <laughs> Exploring the logs, building a dashboard. Blimey, blimey. Yeah, you can see it jumping about. group by interval. So this is HTTP, this is data received, data blocked, failed, waiting, HTTP requests, iterations, maximum views, virtual users, uh, data received, Duration. I think that's what we were on. Nice. Mm. Now, if there was a way of setting this up through Docker Compose to use Influx by default, I'm sure there is a way to do that through the environment variables, perhaps. Because obviously I don't want to have to do all this every time I every, every time I run that. Run that. Let's have a look, little look. Maybe there is a way of doing that. Um, let's go to here. It's a plugin that I need to use, right? Let's just have a little. I was hoping there was uh, an example of a... of a way to do it. Migrate from a previous Docker containers. Modify permissions. Configure the Docker image. Refer to configure the Kravana Docker image page. Because because if I was to bring bring this down, it's gonna it's gonna lose the the stuff that I've created. Let's just have a look at what this suggests. Open all the tabs up. Okay, so that's putting some storage, persistent storage. That makes sense. Okay, logging, dealing with Docker secrets. Okay. Um, 
FluxDB. Maybe I'm missing a trick here. I don't know. I would have thought, though, that, um... No, there doesn't appear to be any sort of thing to say use InfluxDB as a, as the default source, but because I had to go through that um, configuration step to select it and then and then add the URL to it and then do a save and test. So I was kind of thinking that maybe there was something in here that we could use sort of like an environment variable to say set it up, you know, or some command to run. Maybe I'm missing something, but meh. Anyway, anyway. Um, right, so what else can we do with this thing? Because we're we're running, uh, I've gone and lost the tabs. It's not that one. It's not that one. It's that one. If we go to the dashboards now, uh, let's add your first data source. That is what we've done. I'm sure that's what we've just done. Yeah, it is. Yeah, there's my my data data source so if we go back to home uh, okay create your first dashboard add an empty panel add a new row add a panel from a library let's do that no panels found filter by type bar chart bar gauge dashboard list Okay, maybe not. Let's just create our own. Here we go. So we've got the data source selected and we can select the measurement. Let's say it is um, duration. And uh, format as time series, logs, table, maybe not time series, S limit, order by, what can we do on where, name, proto scenario, oh nice, so you can, you can, you can create a scenario name I suppose or create a scenario and then link to that that's pretty clever so we can see that that's already put up there which is super high okay let me just do apply here okay so that's our first Oh, 
Oh, okay. <laughs> Share. Nice. <laughs> this is so, um, so cool. What's table view? Okay, that's the table view. What's actual? Okay, fill. Clever. I can have bars. I can have points. Change the line width. No. <laughs> the fill up. Nice. I like that. I like that. Uh, some gradients. Change the colors. <laughs> wow, there's a lot here. Add some thresholds in. That's cool. That is so clever. I like that. All right, let's get into K6 then. Okay, so we've just had a play with Influx and Grafana. To be fair, we're further than I ever thought we would get today. Um, can I change that panel title though? Uh, can I, if I did edit, can I change the title name? How will I do that? No, no, no. Just so I, just because I wanted to create a new scenario based on another page. Um, so how do, aha, panel title. So let's do home page. And this is HTTP, um, RECQ duration. <laughs> Mentally high. Have we got this running on a sort of a, a like a polling thing? Is that is that happening? Is there a way I can do that? Query options. Interval 20 seconds is the time the data point. Is that? No. From site group by time format as query add expression. Um, <laughs> Graph styles, point sizes, axis. Data links. I thought there was um, a way I could do that. There definitely was in the um, if we go to say dashboard. Yeah, whatever. I thought there was a way in. No, it's not that. It's not that. Or is it in save and test? No, there was something, I'm sure there was some way I was able to create a query. <laughs> Alerts, data sources, that's configuration now, isn't it? All right, let's go back to the dashboard a sec. Oh, no, let's go back to here. Wow, okay, that's confusing. Why do is that dashboard not coming up by default? Do I have to set it to be de default? <laughs> dashboard, here we go, dash home, is that right? No, that's, that is the home. Manage, that's my new dashboard copy. Oh, here we go. Five seconds. 
it's off. Okay, right. That makes sense now. So it's going to hit it every five seconds now, I, I think. He says, hoping that that gets changed. It probably takes longer than five seconds to actually do all this stuff. But um, hopefully we'll see a, a, a third spike. there why do I have no data in the response oh it's because I've changed the date ranges right whoops how do I sort that out Why hasn't it fired off another one though? I thought it would have. What am I doing wrong? 1615, it's now 1642. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't appear to. Um, it hasn't. It doesn't appear to have fired off a third one, which is a bit weird. Is there anything in here about logs? I might be getting too impatient. Um, add a logging data source. Build a dashboard. Dashboard gives you an at a glance view. Every panel consists of a query and a visualization. The query defines what data uh, is to be displayed, whereas the visualization displays, displays defines how the data is to be displayed. Add panel quick on the query editor. Press shift and enter. Okay, so I'm guessing we need to do some rate of 5m that's probably what I need to do by root I probably need to do that right so rate if we had a look above here we have the rate here so add a rate function to your query to visualize the rate of requests per second enter the following query and press shift enter in the query editor in the query editor So, that's the query inspector. Select mean value from where time is greater than or equal to now minus three hours and time is less than or equal to now. Group by time. Right, 
So I think, is that the editor here? So it is coming back. Right, with things. In the query editor. Is that the, what I clicked on, is that the query inspector? Allows you to view, uh, can I add anything into this? No, I can't. And I can see that the queries have happened. Yeah, I can see the queries are happening. So why are they not painting to the page? How strange. Okay, I don't seem to have a qu the query editor. I've got this thing here, which... Aha, here we go. Yes, now I do have the query editor. I see. So... Let's go and take a look at... Add a metrics data source, here we go. In the query editor where it says enter promql enter and then press okay then press shift enter and the graph appears so it's obviously going to be slightly different because that was prometheus whereas this is select the mean of value from http duration where time filter group by time interval fill null series as alias s limit group by fill null First, last, max, difference. Spread. It doesn't like it when it's that uh, that high. Okay, that's a little bit puzzling. I don't understand why it's not refreshing. But let's see if we can just run it manually, shall we? If all else fails. Let's see if this creates a a line in the bar.
doesn't appear to have uh, done anything that. Oh, there we go. Boom. Okay. So for some reason, I'm I haven't been able to kick this off sort of automatically. Don't know why. <sighs> Meh. <laughs> Um, is there a way I can tailor this to be sp like specific to a scenario? I'm, I'm sure there is. I'm, I think I've saw, saw a way to do that, um, somehow. I'm sure there was a way I could do that. On query options, maybe. Nope. A query inspector. Nope. What is it? I don't know what A means. Config by name, filter by name, removes part of the query's results using a regex pattern. The, matten, the, the pattern can be inclusive or exclusive. Filter by query, filter by values, group by histogram, labels to fields, merge, organize fields, outer join, reduce, rename by regex, rows to fields. Allows you to join, calculate, reorder, and hide and rename your query based on results. Okay, before they are visualized. Set the min of your data sources, concatenate fields, filter by name, removes part of the results by regex. No, that's not what I'm after here. How do I remove that? I'm sure there was a way of doing this. Basically, what I want to do is just say, look, can we target this specific scenario or script? Uh, value mappings, data links, add a link, add a field override, overrides, panel links, transparent background, repeat options. Tooltip mode, legend, graph styles, line whips. That's this is all. This is all based on um, the look and feel of the graph, right? Whereas what I want to do. Would it be an expression? No. Hmm. Unless, um, Ah, here we go. Here we go. Where scenario select a tag in the scenario scenario. Okay, so what I should do or select let's remove that. Where name. Okay. I suppose what I should do is have a look at K6. Uh the K6 documentation for uh, scenarios and uh, names and stuff and tags and stuff like that so where we've got we've essentially done this with the options here k6 run stages running cloud tests 
I thought there was a way of saying, you know, this is a scenario or this, you know, this is a tag, this, this test is tagged by yada yada yada. Um, here we go. Tags and groups. Okay, here we go. Uh, the analysis of your load of your load results is a is a required step to find performance issues. A load test usually targets a service involving different subsystems and resources, making it hard to find issues degrading your performance. K6 provides two scripting APIs to help you during the analysis and easily visualize, sort, and filter your test results. This is what I need to do. So groups will organize your load script around common logic. Tags categorize your checks, thresholds, custom metrics and request with tags for in-depth filtering. So I suppose what I want to do is build two tests, one for the homepage and one for, I don't know, a, a page that doesn't have a lot of stuff on it. So let's say, for example, the terms and conditions page or the privacy policy page. Just so I can see on a dashboard, I have two dashboard panels. One is the home page, and one is one is the other page where I can have a comparison. Maybe I don't know. Uh, so groups are optional and allows you to group your large load script, a large load script to help you with the test result analysis. Groups can be nested, allowing you. Oh, nice. Seriously, you can nest the groups. This makes all metrics. Okay, so I've got to think. I'm, I might tag it with a page name rather than grouping them. Oh, like this. Visit product landing page. Add several products to the shopping cart. Visit the login page. Authenticate. Right. This makes all metrics emitted in a group to have the tag group with the value of all group names. Uh, wrapping it separated by a colon, two colons empty screen. For example, you could use groups to organize multiple requests. Due to load balance due, due to loading a page, excuse me, or executing a user action. Uh, groups do the following tasks internally. For each group function, K6 emits a group duration metric that contains the total time to execute a group function. When a taggable resource checks requests or custom metrics run runs with within a, a group k6 will set the tag group and current group name read more about tags okay so get group is get or post list posts okay tags are similar and powerful way to categorize your k6 entities for later result filtering user defined tags or system tags System tag currently K6 automatically creates the following tags by default. Uh, okay, so tags, I suppose, are more specific. So, like for instance, the IP and, and, and all of that stuff. So, maybe we should be using grouping then uh, rather than tags. Is there a way I can do that in? In, in in Grafana, is there a way I can say, look for, if I can find the damn thing. Right, is there a way I can say where is, do we have, we've got name, maybe I can only use name, although as I discovered earlier, there's more options down here and it doesn't like the height. No, I've got expected response method name proto scenario and status so maybe i have to just do it by scenario hmm. still this is pretty good Let's have a little look into, instead of, um, let's have a look at scenarios. Is there a way I can see some protocol scenarios? Okay, so scenario. <laughs> scenarios allowed you to make in-depth configuration to 
how the VUs, virtual users, and iterations are scheduled. This makes it possible for... Okay, okay, scenario. Example scenario. Start time, graceful stop, environment, tags, views, duration, another scenario. Executors, common options. Okay, it's a little bit more involved. <laughs> it's a little bit more involved. I think what I'm gonna have to do is do a little bit more reading offline. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll have something um, Yeah, hopefully we'll have something uh, useful. I think we will. This seems to be quite a huge chunk of change, you know, a huge thing to go through. Um, executors. Shared iterators. Iterations, sorry. Default function. Oh, okay, so a scenario is like, a scenario is like um, a co configuration specific to a particular thing, right? So you would have your, you would declare how it gets executed. You declare the configuration of the virtual users, the amount of iterations it needs to go through and the max duration for each one. I see. I see. Now, I don't know whether the scenario is what I'm after here. Let me go back to the explanation of what a scenario is. Scenarios allow us to make in-depth configurations to how virtual users and iterations are scheduled. This makes it possible to model diverse traffic patterns in low tests, benefits of scenarios include multiple scenarios can be declared in the same script and each one can independently execute a different JavaScript function. Every scenario can have use a distinct virtual user and iteration scheduling pattern powered by purpose-built executor. That would be what the shared iterations are. This enables modeling of advanced execution patterns and can be, can better simulate real-world traffic. They can be configured to run sequ in sequence or parallel or in a mix of two. Different environment variables and metric tags can be set per scenario. So that's quite a massive <laughs> thing there. All I want to do, <laughs> I don't, I think that's like cracking a nut to um, using a sledgehammer to crack a nut here because all I want to do is target a specific page and I thought I could do that I could get away with that through unless I can use a name right what's a name select a tag value okay maybe that's what I need to do maybe that's all I needed to do so if we were to create a new uh, script here let's copy that and go into let's do um, let's test the terms and conditions page so if we load up the site and we go over to terms of use and we just grab that and we so let's do terms of use. We add that in and let's do forward slash terms of use. Oops, let's just take away that double double thing here. And then let's run that as a command. So let's do um, in scripts, let's do oh I'm going to have to do a docker compose up hyphen D and then let's do
ter oops, terms of use dot js. Okay, so now it's hitting that terms of use page. Nice. I'm hoping that this is going to run a bit faster because it doesn't have many images. Alright. So now, if we go back to Grafana, and let's add, well, hang on a minute, we're on, let's add another panel. It's an empty panel. Um, well, I, yeah, okay, fine. I, ideally, we would like to uh, duplicate that one, but then we do duration, and we do where, name, can, is there two things now? Yes, there is, terms of use. Let's change the size of uh, the line, wherever that is. Let's change the panel title, so this is terms of use use mm. here we go line width bring that up a bit There we go. So we've got the terms of use and we've got the home page. So yeah, it is it is it is much quicker. I mean it's totally slow, but it's quicker at least. Let's have a bit let's have a bit of fun with this. Let's say for instance, um, we Let's have a look at those alerts, shall we? So we do alert, and then we create an alert. When it's above, when the average of query A, 5M now, let's do 20. There, can I save this? Is there a save here? Yeah, there is right at the bottom. Test rule. Okay, so firing is true, it's in a pending state. So when the value is over, uh, that should be two seconds, I think. To apply and let's run that again Okay. Any change? Oh, I didn't save that dashboard, did I? <laughs> Silly. So 
So that's data received. Uh, is request data received uh, connecting duration? That's what I'm after. Uh, do it by name. Select the tag. To you. Let's hit save. Yeah. Huh. Hi. Okay, and I probably need to adjust the. If we're going to try out the alerts, create an alert. Can I do 2S? Is that. No. Okay, what does 2 mean? Crikey. Okay, so yeah, the homepage is still running. Um, I thought it was, I would have to force this to happen, but it's not. Um, yeah, nice. Is there a way we can just change this to be like... Uh, uh, so that's time series, bar chart. Requires a string field. Okay. Stats gauge. <laughs> ah. I like that. Histogram. Graph. There's loads. Pie chart. I think I like a gauge. Uh, let's move that above. <laughs> Very cool. Very, very cool. Nice. So, uh, why are they the same though? Hang on a minute. Have I set the data to be the wrong, to be the same? That needs to be where name is equal to be. Oh, hang on, wait, what's going on? Uh, yeah, you. And this one needs to be where net. Yeah, that's I think that's correct. Terms of use. There we go. Oh no, no, sorry, that's the home page. Ha <laughs> ha. Home page. And the alert is anything over twenty, which is there. I th I think that's <laughs> I think that's right. No, no, because that would be the maximum. That would be the minimum. I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure. Mm. Anyway, that looks um, pretty scary in the sense that it's um, the 
the site is running silly, stupidly slow, but at least I've got some form of indication now of um, how slow it is. Um, let's see if we can. Let's see if we can. Um, I mean, why do we sleep for a second? Should we not do that? Let's change that to be uh, refactor to home page. Let's take out the sleeps. Let's run um, uh, this again and run the home page again. I can see now where the scenarios fit in because with the scenarios I can define in configuration in the code the views and the durations and everything um, that makes a lot of sense yeah I can I can now see why that is happening why they need that why they've added that so if we had a look at the yeah, you can see it adjusting. If we had a look at the config. No, not that one. Ah, somewhere in here there is, is it in here? Uh, yeah, examples of scenarios. So for instance, if I wanted to throw different things, like different, um, different uh, specific uh, virtual users and, and uh, not specific if I wanted to a different amount of virtual users and iterations and max durations and wanted to give various different uh, configuration to these these specific things then they would be best done in a in a um, in a scenario and you can change your executor and uh, change start times um, time offset since the start of the test at which point the scenario should begin nice so we'll we'll do the same thing now for the oh damn I need to do a an up hyphen D because this is have I done this as a volume mount a bind mount can't remember. Anyway, um, let's do a home page. Not bad for just starting it up and getting it running. In two hours, we've managed to, well, I've managed to learn a huge amount of K6, get um, get it sending its um, data into InfluxDB and then using Grafana created two dashboard created two panels in a dashboard um, and targeting two separate pages that's not bad what I want to do now is kind of like do every page learn more about scenarios <laughs> uh, I like it I do like this yeah so you can see that the terms of use is far smaller than the uh, home page it's certainly not where we should be at all at all but it's uh, it's good it's good I, I think what I need to do before we do anything is we need to do some um, set this up as persistent storage so where we had um, in Grafana in because I'm screwing around I think it's is it that ETC provisioning I'm not 100% sure 
configure. Here we go. Volume create. Create a persistent volume for your data in var lib Grafana database and plugins. Ah, var lib. Um, okay, so up here we can do. Um, volumes call this Grafana get the spelling right Grafana um, so that's going to be a, a, a docker volume and then yeah that's where we need it to be Grafana, uh, let's just call that Grafana storage. There we go. Logs in the Docker container go to a standard out by default. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, run Grafana uh, while logging to both standard and output in the var log grafana log okay so there's obviously a lot i need to do in terms of like securing this dealing with secrets and uh the jazz but i think as an initial setup i think this is pretty good i'm fairly happy with this um it's just a shame that I, if there was a way of, uh, if there was a way of setting the um, dashboard setup and the influx DB settings in configuration that I can save to source control, that, I mean, there's a GF path config here. Var lib Grafana, var lib Grafana. Yeah, I guess what I would need to do is commit this to source control. I don't think I, I don't think I want to. <laughs> but I wonder what is in here. Let me just have a look at something. Uh, so, with Grafana, um, backing up or committing dashboards to GitHub. Here we go. Right. What what are people doing to back up their Grafana dashboards? I've seen online seen online people saying to use the Grafana API to export the dashboard and save it off somewhere. Is that what everyone is doing? Or is there a direct integration with Git? Python code to dump and back up Grafana using its API. I've been using uh, the repo that uh, you've been suggesting and how to rebuild the installation of the backups from it. It's a good backup solution and you can easily add backups to into Git repository. Thanks for the link. You could also alternatively use Wizzy. Uh, okay, Wizzy works great and it's much better, better structured. Okay, so there's a couple of things here. Um, Grafana Backup Wizzy, and I think there's another thing up here. The Grafana Backup Tool. Oh yeah, that's what I've got here. Uh, but this is a PHP app, not a Python app, so I don't really want to add a, another programming language to the mix. I mean, 
I could do, but um, so the idea is to yeah, I'm. I might have a little look and see what is the um, what's in in here, maybe, and see if there's a way of perhaps zipping it up and unzipping it, storing it off site. I don't know. Might get a bit complicated, but um, it would be nice to be able to have a Grafana. Um, dashboard that is consistent in all development environments that would be lovely uh, but anyway right i'm going to shoot off thank you ever so much for watching happy coding everybody um, it's been great fun playing with this i really enjoyed it really enjoyed it um, and um, if anybody from grafana or um, k6 does get to see this thank you ever so much for this amazing tool it's wonderful and I've managed to do so much more than I thought we were going to be able to do. So I'm going to be back uh, next week, as usual, um, on Tuesday evenings at uh, 8 o'clock. Uh, uh, no, at 5.30, maybe 6 p.m. British Standard Time at, on YouTube. Uh, and then we'll continue the podcast on Thursday. That's at 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. Uh, that's going to be live on YouTube as well. And then I'll be back here on Twitch on Sunday. So thank you ever so much for watching. Happy coding, everybody. And I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Bye-bye. Take care, everyone.